Well, if you don't eat beans and rice, do not store beans and rice. Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. Welcome back to my kitchen. If you're new, my name is Becky and today we're gonna to be talking about something that I'm really passionate about and I've been passionate about this since I was a kid and that is keeping a stocked pantry. So we are gonna talk about today the 12 most essential pantry staples you should keep in your pantry at all times and especially now because inflation is coming. So what got me into keeping a stocked pantry, and you're gonna probably think this is kind of funny, but as a kid, I was homeschooled and I had friends, and they're still my friends to this day, and one of our favorite pastimes was to cook or bake. We mostly did baking because we got a sweet treat at the end. Some of the parents were better at keeping a stocked pantry than others, and quite honestly, as a kid, there was nothing more annoying to me than running out of pantry staples when we were in the middle of a recipe. And so just that instilled to me that when I had my own house, my goal was to try to keep a stocked pantry at all times if possible. What's reinforced this to me and now I have a broader picture and a bigger outlook on why I think it's important. It's not just so that I can make any recipe whenever I want and I'm not gonna run out of those staples to have to run to the grocery store, but it's because there's some craziness that's going on in the world for the last two years. There was times when there was no flour on the Costco shelves, any of the grocery store shelves in our area for about two weeks. And my brother-in-law, this is just an example, he wanted to make my sister-in-law a birthday cake. This was March of 2020. There was no flour. I think he went to four or five different stores in our area. There was no flour. Well, my friends and family know that I am into bulk buying. And so he asked if he could borrow some flour. I was more than willing to share some of my flour with him and so that he could make my sister-in-law a birthday cake. But that is more of the bigger picture of why I think it is so important to have a stocked pantry. And it's not just for the craziness of the outside world, but it's also things that can happen in our personal lives. Job losses or whatever it might be, whether it's external circumstances or internal circumstances that can cause it to where we need to have a little bit of extra in our pantry. Right now, food prices are a real concern. Just inflation in general right now is crazy. I wanted to do this video for a really long time and start a series on how and why to bulk buy and what you should and shouldn't bulk buy. And I thought this was perfect timing because I know meat prices right now have gone up a ton. But I did a huge bulk order in February of 2021 and I just did a huge bulk order last month. And I wanted to compare the prices to see if my pantry staple prices have increased in that last year span. And I'm gonna get into all the numbers here, but there were only a couple that increased and one of them decreased and some stayed exactly the same. And some I didn't have information on it, so I'm not 100% sure. So that is why I thought this was the perfect time to do this video so that you know what you should be stockpiling or I don't know if I like that word, what you should be preparing for and starting to bulk up your pantry staples so that you have today's prices tomorrow. We're about to get into our items, but before we do that, I just wanted to say this is not fear mongering, this is not panic buying, this is not clickbait. These are real foods for your real pantry, for real life, so that you can be prepared. I hope this is encouraging, this is not, this is not um, to instill fear or to instill anything like that. This is just to be motivating to just Put a few more things up in your pantry. So let's get right into it. These prices mostly have not gone up and it's pretty crazy. I'm not gonna lie, I was shocked when I ran the numbers this morning to see that some of these prices were exactly the same thing. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is sugar. For this 50 pound bag of organic cane sugar, I paid last February $57.75 for this entire bag. Last month, February of 2022, I spent $57.75 for this entire bag of sugar. It did not go up one penny. Shocking, right? Go buy yourself some sugar. So I only buy cane sugar, and I'm gonna show you why, because you can make powder sugar, confectioner sugar, and brown sugar yourself. So let's get into item number two. So item number two is buy yourself a gallon of black strap molasses. This not only adds flavor to savory dishes, but it also allows you to make your own homemade brown sugar whenever you need it. I have a full video on how to make brown sugar 
and powder sugar, and I can link them down in the description box if you're interested. These are not included in the 12 items. These are items that I can make from this one item if you have the blackstrap molasses. So I bought this blackstrap molasses in 2020 and I spent $27.26 on it. Today on Amazon, it's $19.84 for this exact thing of organic blackstrap molasses. Pretty good price. Or maybe it's not organic. Maybe it's just blackstrap. It's non-GMO. So for every ingredient that we go over today, not every, but for a lot of them, I'm also gonna give you some alternatives. So for the first one, for cane sugar, say you don't eat any refined sugar in your house. Maybe in your house you use honey or maple syrup, but having whatever sweetener that you're used to cooking with and eating on a regular basis is something that's gonna be important for you to keep on hand. So this is probably pretty obvious, but this is a 50 pound bag of white flour. Flour is essential because you can cook and make a ton of things with it. In February of 2021, I spent for this 50 pound bag, exactly the same brand and everything, of flour, I spent $55.25. Last month, last February, a year from the day I bought it, I spent $55.25. So I did not pay a penny more for this flour, but I don't think that's gonna be the case for much longer. I think prices on these pantry stables are gonna start creeping up. So that was really encouraging to research that this morning. If you are a gluten-free family, then keeping a 50 pound bag of white flour on hand is not gonna be realistic for you. So maybe if you have your favorite gluten-free flour substitute, or if you make your own, keep those ingredients on hand in bulk so that you can have those ingredients that you use on a regular basis always on hand. So these here are the buckets that I store the majority of my bulk food in. These are five gallon food grade buckets with what are called gamma seal lids. These are my favorite, favorite lids because they are easy. Let's see if I can get it in one hand. Yes, they're easy to open and close even one handed. In the next video in the series, I'm gonna go more in depth into containers for food storage, but right now these are my favorite. I did just order some new ones that are stackable, that are square, that have the Gamma Seal lid. It's the Gamma Seal lid that is a game changer when it comes to food storage. This food is food that I'm constantly rotating through. It's not food that I put up in my pantry and I let it sit for 20 years. This is food we eat. And so being able to have good access to it is really important to me. So that's why I love these Gamma Seal lids. If you are interested where I buy, the majority of these items, I will link them down in the description box along with those buckets and lids. Now this is three different items, but I'm considering it one category. I'm considering it the leavening agents in order to do our baked goods. So in here, I have baking soda. This is not only good for baking, but it's also good for cleaning. So I buy this in bulk. I also try to keep on hand always one or two baking powders. Baking powder does have a shelf life, so I usually don't keep a big bucket of it like that. And then yeast. So I don't know what the price changes on these over the last year have been, but yeast was one of those things that did go up a little bit in price. I have two different types of yeast. I have self-rising and active dry, and I just cut off the, the label and stick it in there. That's how I know which one is which, because these are just recycled salsa lids. So yeast a year ago was $4.68, and this year, last month, I paid $5.02 for a big thing of yeast. By having all three of these in your pantry at all times, you are gonna be able to bake up, whip up almost any biscuit, pizza dough, yeasted bread, or anything like that. And it's just really, really good to have these on hand. I always buy in bulk my yeast. It is so expensive to buy the little individual packets. If you do any sort of baking, yeast lasts forever. I put it in this mason jar and I stick it in the freezer or refrigerator and it lasts for years and years and years. So there's no need, if you're gonna do any sort of baking, to buy those little packets. Cause I think at my Kroger store, they are almost $2 for three little individual packets. And sometimes you use two packets in a recipe. So even with a little bit of inflation over the last year on yeast, this is still only $5.02 in order to buy an entire, I think this is one pound of yeast, which is a lot of yeast. The next thing I like to keep a lot of on hand are fats. I like to keep some solid fat for like butter 
and I use this for biscuits and cookies and baking and toast and all the things but I also like to keep a liquid fat on hand because I use this for salad dressings and pan searing and mayonnaise and things like that so I like to have two different types of fats on hand these aren't the only ones I have but these are the ones that I always 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 will have on hand and I keep all this butter in the freezer so it stays fresh for an indefinite amount of time so don't quote me on that I don't know how long it stays fresh but it stays fresh for a long time I personally don't like to keep those refined oils in my house I like to try to keep the fats in my house that are the most close to nature as possible and so that is why I choose to keep butter and olive oil but coconut oil is a great choice avocado is a great choice but those are more expensive oils for me so that's why I tend to kind of gravitate toward having a larger supply of both butter and olive oil here are some powdered dairies this is one I freeze dried my own these are two that are store-bought one is just whole milk and one is buttermilk these are fantastic to keep on hand for baking especially during pantry challenge i really really learned that it is so great having powdered milk i do not use this for anything like cereals or anything where i want the fresh milk flavor but if i'm baking in it i'm not gonna be able to taste the actual flavor i just need the properties of the milk to do what i need them to do for me then this is a phenomenal way to keep them on hand oh but buttermilk powder is fantastic to make homemade ranch powdered seasoning which i have a recipe on that if you're interested in that I can link that down in the description box. So those are great to keep on hand, whether you make them your own like I do or you buy them store-bought, no problem. Definitely would keep these on hand. Over here, we have some freeze-dried whole eggs. Now, you can buy whole eggs powdered. That You can get them online. I think you might be able to even get them in your grocery store. I'm not sure. They are great for whipping up some quick scrambled eggs. They're great for putting in muffins, for cakes. Obviously with this, the yolks and the whites are together. So you cannot do any recipe where you need just yolks or just whites, or you can't make a fried egg with this because it's already scrambled in here. But that is fantastic to have on hand if you just run out of eggs. Here we have vinegar. Vinegar is just a staple. It is important to keep on hand. You can use this for cleaning, cooking, food preservation, make quick pickles. I just think vinegar is one of those things that should always, always be in anybody's pantry. The next thing that is essential for life, and sometimes I think we take for granted, is salt. This is salt that is mined in Utah. This is Redmond Real Salt. You can see how beautiful there's different colors in it. Each one of those colors is a different mineral. I also buy my salt in bulk. This is a 25 pound bag of pink Himalayan salt, which is also an unrefined salt. I no longer buy this type of salt though. Pink Himalayan salt is mined in Pakistan. I purchased that 25 pound bag of pink Himalayan salt before I had done any research on the Himalayan salt industry and they do have some questionable practices. So I found when I was at the Home Centers of America conference, Redmond Real Salt, which is the same type of salt. It's a sea salt that is technically mined out of the ground because it was from a seabed that was from years and years and years ago that no longer exists. But it is an untouched salt because there's no pollutants in it because it's from so long ago buried underground. Because it's so common and we use it literally every day, every single meal we have has salt in it. And what other recipes? I mean, pepper, we use pepper a lot, but we don't use pepper in every sweet dish. And you, you should be using salt in your sweet dishes if you're not. So salt is one of those things that we literally eat on almost every single thing that goes into our mouth because it makes food taste good and it's good for us. It helps our body function. If we don't have salt, we die. <laughs> But the salt that we need to be scared of is the salt in prepackaged food because there's so much salt in that and you can't control the quality of salt in those. So the salt you cook with at home should not be feared. I do like to take pride in the salt that I use along with everything else and I try to source it as, as best as possible. Not everything is perfect, but I have found a really good company that I really trust in their salt and why salt is so important is the world's first and best food preservation method out there. You cure meats with it, you ferment with it, 
you it is the original food preservation before there were canners before there were freeze dryers before there were food dehydrators there was salt and salt is so important i have an entire video where we go into the mine in utah and i talk about the history of salt i talk about the practices of the salt i talk about how it's mined out of the ground and it's a pretty incredible experience so I might be kind of nerdy about salt, but I am a little nerdy about salt because I'm kind of a nerdy about food. I love food. I am, a, I, I love, I love food. I'm passionate about it. And so, anyway, we're gonna go on to the next thing. In this bucket, we have oats. Oats are something we eat. My husband eats it almost every single day, and they are just full of protein, full of fiber, super filling, super affordable. Oats are one of the items that did increase in a year. The last time I bought it, I spent $24.92 for a 25 pound bag of organic oats. And when I bought these last month, I spent $29.16. So they did go up about four and a half dollars in price. So still not too bad, still pretty affordable, but that is one thing that did go up in price. I still think they're worth it, I think. Um, oats are just they are a staple and I bought two bags this time instead of one bag because I saw the trend of them going up in price and because Josh eats them almost every single day I want to keep them on hand because they will get eaten the next two pantry staples I always keep on hand are black beans these are black beans that I grew last year well probably 50% of them are ones I grew last year and the rest of them were store-bought. And then over here, we have brown rice. I store both brown and white rice in my house. I think it's important to keep both on hand if you can. Brown rice does not have as long of a shelf life as white rice. So that is why if you can keep both on hand, I think that is super important. I am really working hard on trying to eat less white rice and eat more brown rice. And it's actually, it's been working. So that is why I have this out here. This is organic jasmine rice. I know that I think the probably the two most popular prepper items or preparedness items are beans and rice. Well, if you don't eat beans and rice, do not store beans and rice. I think the number one rule for pantry storage is store what you eat. If you buy things that you don't like, they are not gonna get eaten. In the event of an emergency where you need to be cooking with these things because job loss, um, car broke down and you need to save money to buy a car and don't have money for expensive, or like if you need to save money on your grocery bill or whatever it might be, if you have purchased things to be prepared that you don't actually eat, then that's a waste of money because you're not gonna eat them even in a stressful situation. Or you might eat them, but it's gonna make that situation a little bit more stressful because now you're forced to not only be in a stressful situation, but you're forced to eat foods you don't really like. And let me tell you, no one wants to do that. So I wanna talk about these buckets for a second. We're not gonna talk about in depth about the buckets, but I wanna talk about the prices of the buckets and the lids because that fits into this video. We're gonna go more in depth on storage of bulk goods and all those things in the next video in the series but i wanted to talk about the price because i was shocked when i did this research when i bought these buckets i've had a bunch of them for years but the last time i bought more buckets was about a year ago i spent about almost eight dollars a lid and i spent almost seven dollars a bucket trust me the lids are worth every penny but today on amazon you can get this a lot cheaper. You're gonna pay about uh, about $4.60 a bucket for a food grade five gallon bucket. And you're gonna spend about five-ish dollars a lid. It does depend on what color you buy. The lids were different prices depending on the color, which I think is kind of funny. I hope this was encouraging to you that some of these prices have not changed in a year. And so if I were you, I'd probably go out and I would go start stocking up on some of these items. If you are interested where I buy the majority of these items, I will link them down in the description box along with those buckets and lids. And we will go into more in depth in the next video about how to store them, why we need to do this, and some other tips and tricks on how to start stocking your pantry, your freezer, and just getting your food storage bulked up for whatever life throws at us. Whether that's we're just trying to make cookies and we want butter and so we have butter on hand, or something more serious like a job loss 
or some other world event that could be causing supply chain issues, inflation issues, or lack of food issues, whatever it might be. Well, friends, I hope you found this video valuable. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider sharing it with anybody that you think might benefit from this information. If you're curious to know what my entire pantry setup is like, I did a pantry tour at the end of harvest season. I can put a video right there and you can go see that. If you want to see what the inside of my freezers look like, I have two deep freezers and one extra freezer in my pantry. You can see that video right here. I'll post that for you as well. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. Consider sharing it with people that you think that would find value in it. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye guys.